up guys this is a smell call so i've got a tim train tim 4 air handler here and what in the world do i do with my other flashlight i am the worst one in the world there's in my pocket but uh Anyway, we've got a Tim 4 air handler. It's a 2022, so it's only about a year and a half old since we're just now getting into 2024. But some dirty sock, basically. The old mystery of dirty sock. So, this unit. Got a new return plenum on it. I do believe when we put this in, we did replace this and connect it to the original trunk. I'd like to see inside that. I may get my camera uh, my endoscope and look in there and see what condition this old trunk line is in. It runs all the way down there and there and then branches off. Uh, we did replace the supply plenum transition that connects to that we also put a coated coil in this thing last year everybody knows anything about dirty sock i'm not an expert on it but i know there was a manufacturer that will go nameless that had some legal issues with it some time back and pull this out class action type situation back in the early 2000s and that manufacturer won basically letting everybody know that it's chemical makeups inside the house furniture carpet paint cleaning chemi chemicals upholstery it, all those things off gas at certain temperatures and humidities and you get the right combination they collect in here and then you warm and cool and wet that coil, most commonly in defrost cycle. And you get that little bit of a smell. I haven't gone in there and ran it yet. I've got it off for the time being because I want to look in here, see what's going on. So we had that problem about, I don't know, a few months or maybe right when she was going into winter last year, into the spring or defrost last year. Anyway, we did come back and put a coated coil on this thing. Now you are not supposed to clean those with chemical cleaners, just a just a warm water, and that's it. Um, now the train coil does come because they had an issue with their aluminum brazing overheating and causing a reaction in this, so it does come with about an inch gap right here so they could get this thing the temperature up on these fittings to get them brazed in at least that's what the rfsr told us i don't know uh, but even now that they're doing that you still find these things leaking so i don't know but it is a coated coil technicoated coil supposed to prevent the dirty sock syndrome and uh we're gonna find out Alright, so I have gone in the house. I've got this thing running in air conditioning. I'm going to pop a couple of holes. We're going to check this out with the uh, the old endoscope camera. See what condition this duct work is in. I mean, that doesn't... I mean, the manufacturer won the case. It is what it is. Uh, they were taking units that were uh, producing the dirty sock. And they would remove them and put them in another location and it would go away and stop so it would do it in one house it wouldn't do it in another house so after a couple of years of that carrier oops yeah they won and uh they no longer provided a coated coil unless you were going to pay for it that's just you know linux was the same way but uh it's not the equipment that causes that more than it is the the right combination of stuff going on inside of a house all culminating right here with the heating the cooling and the dampness 
but uh, we're gonna run this thing in air conditioning for a few minutes just to simulate defrost cycle I will test that a couple of times but I want to get this coil wet and then we're gonna switch it back to heating and I'm gonna go in the house and see if I can smell anything but I'm still gonna inspect the inside of that ductwork so I've got I, I ran this thing in air conditioning for about 12 13 14 minutes Hopefully got a little bit of water on that coil right now. I'm back in heat. It's been running in heat for about three or four minutes inside. And I'm not smelling anything in there. I'm going to run the defrost on it a couple of times as well. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to shut this thing. Well, actually, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to pop a hole. And we're going to look inside that ductwork real quick. And I'm going to stick this in the scope in there. Let it heat a little bit more, then I'm gonna we're gonna run the defrost a few times on it and see if we can see if we can get whatever it is to happen. But I'm not smelling anything at this point. So I've got the old endoscope. We're gonna come over here. I'm gonna pop a hole, pop a hole in here now. And look inside this trunk line, just for peace of mind. See what it looks like in there. So everything in there, I gotta take these back up and seal them. Yeah, everything in there looked fine to me. Turn that off. This little camera comes in pretty handy. Let me stick my head back in here real quick. Let's see if I smell anything, and then we're gonna run this thing in defrost a couple of times. Let's see what we got. I mean, I don't. Motor's nice and cool. Not even barely warm. I mean, I don't. I'm not smelling anything out of the ordinary inside this air handle. But I'm going to run the defrost cycle on it a couple of times and then we'll check it and just confirm. Alright guys, we're just waiting for the outdoor unit to come on. Thermostat in there has got to reset. And then go through a little delay. Train 824 thermostat, so anytime you turn the power off, turn it back on, it's gotta reboot itself and all that all that crap that a thermostat shouldn't have to do. It's trying to make them too smart for what they're using them for. Keep it simple. Anyway, wait for this thing to come back on. I'm gonna run the defrost in it 
three or four times. I'm not smelling anything yet. Like I said, you're not supposed to clean the coated coils with chemical cleaners, coil cleaner, any type of deodorizing, uh, whatever. Just use warm hot water. Spray it down with hot water. So I don't know if somebody has put that on it at some point in time. Um, not knowing any better. I mean, it is what it is. I'm not smelling anything right now. And, and I, the ductwork looked fine on the inside. This house is built in 1997, she said. So uh, to be that old, they're, they're keeping the filters changed on a regular basis. And I mean, usually those old metal trunk insulated ducts aren't that bad for whatever reason, but you get the plenums that are the insulation and all the crap the metal ducts where the insulation lines the inside of it like some plenums and your air flows off you'll get growth in those things you're not going to get that it's not porous so those metal insulated metal ducts are are pretty good especially for the long haul you just gotta keep them sealed keep them insulated all right we're back on we're gonna run this thing in defrost a couple of times and but yeah, that duct system's not, not bad at all. There are a few runs of flex tied in. That trunk goes from one end of the house to the other and then branches off everywhere you come to a supply run or whatever. Those old metal duct systems, that round hard pipe, insulated, sealed, getting the right insulation on it. I mean, it's way better for airflow than flex duct work is. Uh, the friction rate is a whole lot less smooth can't beat it you just got to keep it insulated real well keep it sealed and, um, it's just my opinion anyway let's run defrost real quick and I'm gonna do this two or three times and then go in the house and see if I can smell anything she had a whole list of when she's getting it and it's not every day maybe every few days but it's always in that early morning period uh, except one time I think it was about 11 o'clock at night but uh which indicates to me it's got it has to be the defrost control because it's not happening every day just on cold days it's always in the early morning hours five to five to seven in the morning and then that one specific time, 11 o'clock at night. So, uh, I mean, it is what it is. You get the right combination of things on that coil. You heat it, you cool it, you wet it. Um, it's got a coated coil in it. You're not supposed to use cleaner on those coils. I care what anybody tells you. I mean, it is what it is. I'm not putting any cleaner on that. I'm not going to be the one to start breaking down the effectiveness of what that coating does by putting cleaner on it. Rinse it down with some hot water. Let's try it one more time. back in the house real quick and uh, see if we're getting any kind of a smell all right so we're gonna get this door back on here I went back in the house I ran this thing in defrost about three times I'm not gonna sit out here and keep doing it over and over again I ran it in air conditioning then I ran it in heat I ran defrost cycle three times and I'm not smelling anything in there. It smells normal. So, I mean, it's it, it's a smell or a noise. They're the most aggravating calls that you can run. Because I, I mean, there's not ain't a whole lot of money to be made on calls like that unless you're gonna sell somebody a UV light or some kind of snake oil air cleaner crap. I mean, a good media filter is really the best thing you can put in a system I just 
have my opinion on all that IAQ crap. But, I mean, you don't like these calls because there's not a whole lot to, you know. It, I mean, this is warranty anyway. This unit's only a year and a half. But I hate a smell call and I hate a noise call. Just You don't want to be there very long. You're just going to lose. So, unless you find a bad motor or something you can get your time out of. But, anyway, enough about that, guys. I'm going to go in there and seal these holes up and call this one done appreciate you watching have a good one like subscribe see you on the other side